All right, Scotty's playing with our new camera this morning. <laughs> How you doing with it? <laughs> I want to put it down because I'm afraid already. <laughs> I don't know where I, I went from one thing. <laughs> and you have my glasses on today. <laughs> You're looking stylish there. <laughs> Language? Oh my gosh. Okay, well, he's figuring See, that got, out for me. I do have me. the book here. I'm going to try to read the book. <laughs> oh, it's he's kinda, got the directions it's out. It's kind of early in the morning, but I just don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm over here paying, paying bills, so he's he's playing with the camera. All right, we'll see you guys later on when we're all cleaned up and ready to go. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see from up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me We meant to be In the great outdoors Forever free these ants are. In the asphalt they've made their home. And it, oh my gosh they've even been ran over by a tire for gosh sakes. And they just keep on going. I have no idea what kind of ants they are but they're probably fire ants or something. Weird. All right. <laughs> yes. the middle of whole big park. I know. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's see, where are we going? We are going to go across the street here. I believe it's called the Coachella Valley Museum. Well, let's go see what kind of trouble we can get into today, guys. by Dr. Spy and his wife in 1926. You're standing in his reception office. Okay, this was his examination room. You're gonna Can go you talk up just a little bit? I'm sorry, you're going to go through the home. And right now we're going to take start you in the kitchen. Uh, this, you will be learning here about the Koweans all the way back to 10,000 years ago to the history of our, actually millions of years ago to when the Gulf of California was actually here. You'll learn that from her later. She finishes that. And the Koweans are Native Americans, are indigenous people. And she'll be taking you through the, the, their home. He built the home here in 1926. Uh, I want you to have this history from the beginning of it. Sure. He and his wife were coming through in a car. They broke down. They were on their way to the beach from Arkansas. I would have said, fix the car, we're going on, because there was no air conditioning. <laughs> but he said, we're staying. They both, they both fell in love with the desert. They built this house that's 3,500 square feet. It has a basement that's very rare for this time, and I'm sure you'll talk about that later. The water table is so high. Our aquifers below us, it was very hard to build basements. So this is a, quite a modern home for the time. Most homes were the size of a, a closet almost. So this is like a mansion, 3,500 square feet. Yes, large. Okay. So he and his wife, practiced medicine he did. She was his receptionist for 20 years, no children. Then Dr. Tyler moved in. He was a dentist. And he was here until, I believe, 18, the 1980s, okay? And then he died last year. Two years ago, his wife died last year. So that's kind of the history of the home. And now I'm going to give you to Suri. Can you introduce yourself? Oh, I'm Suri Beecher. Okay. And I'm a docent here, a volunteer. And uh, I've been here, I guess for five years. Five years, very nice. Um, so we are going to, I guess, start, how about if we start outside, or we go to Dage Museum? Oh, yeah, I want to start at the 
Blacksmith. We're, Blacksmith. we're yeah. all getting a free, uh, a, not a free, but a personal tour here. So I hope you guys all enjoy this. This property was much larger. It was three blocks uh, uh, of the property. There was no wall, no apartment, nothing here. So uh, you will see a lot of um, uh, outdoor equipment. Of course, uh, it, it was used to uh, for the farm and farm. I don't mean he farmed anything, but to take the uh, to take care of a property. This area has nothing to do with Dr. Smiley. It was built in 1988. We have a lot of events that we um, uh, run throughout the year. And here we barbecue for the people through when they come oh, to our nice. events. Oh, that's nice. Wow. This was the uh, maid quarter for Dr. Smiley. And uh, they, they have made, obviously, as Kathy says, the house was sort of like considered as a mini mansion and they were considered wealthy. And here is uh, some of their equipment, the washing machine, the dryer. Uh, this was the little cooler that they put milk and egg oh, in. Oh, goodness. <laughs> and uh, how this worked, they put, uh, they stole uh, burlap all over the four sides of this and put the bucket of cold water up there and drip the water oh. with the burlap and cool off the... the oh stuff. my goodness. <laughs> they used their brain so wonderfully. It's just unbelievable how they made uh, use of uh, many, many things that you think, you know, uh, they didn't have. Right. As you see, you can see a lot of equipment pull and push. Some of the equipment belongs to them. Some of them are donated. But this is a sample of the Adobe house because this house is an Adobe. Of course, you didn't go through the um, uh, house. Uh, when we are inside, I'll show you the thickness of the walls. The, um, the Adobe house is made of these brick very thick brick filled with uh, straws. Oh. It keeps the house cooler than other houses and warmer in the winter. And so they put the stucco over the adobe. Okay, the I see. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow, okay. So, and this is the blacksmith. The blacksmith building? Like any other big property, he needed the blacksmith. To, um, you know, repair the equipment. Oh boy. Uh, so here they have all kinds of, uh, are you looking for the bathrooms? No, I'm looking for the schoolhouse. Oh, schoolhouse. Oh uh, boy, this has a lot of stuff. Right across the road is the schoolhouse. That's good. Uh, I mean, across the yard. Across the yard. Oh, oh, the There's no road for a car going. Uh, of course, um, the these are the display from um, uh, Pacific Railroad. Uh, when the railroad came uh, in, here, they found that India is the midpoint between Los Angeles and Yuma, Arizona. And they started building the railroad. Uh, they needed, nobody was in this area but the uh, Native Americans. So they needed a lot of employees. They um, advertised and people came from all over the United States as well as all over the world to work for the railroad. They paid them well. We have Japanese, French people who are now very old, living still, some of them, and they are the one that they came with the family and joined working in the rail at the railroad. The railroad uh, was the biggest employer at that time. Everybody worked for the railroad. Even Dr. Smiley worked for the railroad. The wow. architect worked for the railroad. They were the largest employer. These are the old insulator that they use at the railroad. You can see the Mickey Mouse shape. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the new insulators. And these, these right here? Or yes. These were the newest yes. ones? And um, wow. they, of course, throughout the house, you will see awful lot of uh, water pump that they use. And this was their well. Oh, goodness. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> and we think we got it hard trying to find water as we travel. <laughs> Here is our schoolhouse. The schoolhouse is 
schoolhouse, uh, uh, this is schoolhouse was built in 1909. It was moved a couple of times. Standing here looking at the building here, well, what does it remind you, the shape of the building? It looks to me kind of oriental to a degree. Or the train station. The train, oh. yeah, and, yeah, now, okay, I see it. the reason for that is that the architect even was employed by the uh, railroad. So everybody worked at it. Oh. And this building wasn't built, uh, wasn't here. It has moved a couple times. In, originally, it was in Indio on the street, I think, Fargo. But then they moved it uh, into the train station. It was a school. They were used as a school until 1960. And then they moved it to the train station and used it as a cafeteria. To this train station? They moved it over to the, this train station? or Well, the, wherever the, uh, to, to tell you the truth, I don't want to give you the Okay. <laughs> I don't know exactly we keep seeing the trains over in that way. And uh, then uh, it was used for the cafeteria as a cafeteria. And then at one point, they took the windows off and used it as a maintenance room. Oh gosh. So before we go in, this is another, this is the only water pump that uh, uh, still works. And this is my weekly uh, exercise. <laughs> oh, there, are, yeah. And this is a recycled water. Of course, okay. we are always in a drought. We right, a right. If we get three days rain in a year, we are lucky. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> These are all the desert, uh, uh, flowers and bushes. One thing they were coming from the East Coast, and I love about the desert, uh, we have flowers and green and wonderful uh, things all year round. Yeah. So uh, it is really, don't ask me the name of the flowers. Okay, I won't no do idea. that. That's yeah. how I feel though when we're uh, driving, all the beautiful colors that we're seeing is kind of fun to have flowers because in Washington there's, it's brown. I mean, it's, it's green, but there's no flowers. Flowers, no, we have flowers 27 Oh, look at that ceiling. This is a wonderful, large schoolhouse. The ceiling is a tin, tin ceiling. The ceiling, the window, and the floors are all original. Wow. You can imagine, I always say, you hear my accent, I wasn't born yet. I'm so proud of what American made those days. It lasts, they made things last forever. You look at the floor, you think we installed it a couple of years ago, 1909 to now. The ceiling, the windows, even though that they, at one point they took the windows out and put them back. The uh, glass is velvet, the velvet they call them, it says a wavy glass. Oh. And uh, this was where, uh, as you know, and like any other wonderful schoolhouse, uh, it was mixed the grades together. And that is the uh, sample of the uh, wall of the uh, building that is uh, built. Uh, oh yeah, lath and plaster. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've ha I've worked with uh, lath before. Oh. <laughs> I took nails out of hundreds of those. Oh. <laughs> and this uh, door actually comes down. Uh, oh at yeah. Time, uh, they have taken that away. They had a, a roof and a Up and down. Oh, and yeah. Then we have a handle. Oh, yeah. If they wanted to use this room for some events, they pulled it down and used it. If they had more students, they put chairs here and seats here and they used it. And then we go from here. These are the samples of the equipment and the books and the lunch boxes that oh. the children used. Wow. The typewriters, I mean, we have the children, the school children, bus here, um, uh, they, they come here and they've never seen a typewriter or uh, lunch boxes. Up I, yeah, I think a lot of kids have never seen never a typewriter. Seen. I still have our electric typewriter because I was afraid to get rid of it. <laughs> oh boy.
right. This was actually uh, the front door, the entrance door that the children came in and out. And 99%, and if not 100% of the children here the, uh, were the uh, uh, railroad workers. Railroad. They were poor, they couldn't afford books. So the books were loaned to them. And, uh, wow. And this is, of course, 100% of the teachers were all women in 1915. That's, those are the rule and regulation for the teachers. That they shouldn't get married, they shouldn't oh be out after <laughs> 7 p.m., they shouldn't be seen by a man, but it's a brother or uh, <laughs> husband or father. And it's a very strict rule. And but they pay them well and the teachers stay. That was the outhouse. Um, I don't know. Um, oh boy! <laughs> and this is a replica of that uh, outhouse, the two seater. Um, <laughs> yeah, we saw one of these over in um, Quartzsite. Yes. Exactly like that, pretty much. The two seater. <laughs> the two seater, one for a kid and one for an adult. <laughs> Go to the the only date museum in the world. In, the, in world. the world, we are. I don't know how much you know about dates and and the date we just growing. took them to the Shields Date Company, so they are aware of what a date is date now. Is. If they weren't before, dates are the freshest fruit. They are full of antioxidant, full of minerals and vitamins. There is nothing added to them. It's just a hundred percent. Uh, natural. Some people say, oh, it's too sweet. I said, yeah, but it's nobody added sugar to it. It's just a natural sugar. The wonderful fruit. But and I don't know if at Shield or other places, even grocery store, when you price the dates, they're not cheap by any means. And what when in 1898, I will tell the whole story in the um, museum, when uh, we brought the date offshoots from Saudi Arabia and Algeria and brought it to United States, they planted it everywhere. And then they found out that this area and some area in Arizona are the best for planting the date palm trees and uh, producing dates. We have uh, put the dates, if you go, have you seen this in Salton Sea? Yes, we've yep. stayed at the Salton Sea. And when you uh, travel, I don't know which way you go, yep. 111, and you will see acres of acres yes. of acres of land with the, the yep. palm tree. The date palm tree, it takes five to ten years for a, a tree to grow a small amount of dates, like 50 to 100 pounds. Wow. It takes it... 15 to 20 years to get into its full production of dates, which is 250 to 300 uh, pounds of dates. Uh, the, the date palm tree grows to be 90 feet up and lives 150 years. Oh my goodness. We usually plant the date palm trees, uh, 50 trees in one acre of land 30 feet apart and out of the 50 uh, trees 49 of them are female and one is male I right. always said that's a male <laughs> and I don't know if you're aware we can walk to the yep. if you're aware that um, the date uh, uh, palm trees they don't pollinate themselves they, uh, they have to be pollinated by human beings and that's another expensive way to grow dates. And that's why dates, even for us, is not a cheap product. Right. right. And uh, dates, actually, you can store the dates in the freezer up to five years. Wow. And you can put it in the refrigerator up to two years. 
And because no. nothing added to it, Thank you, ma'am. it stays there and never really freezes into the... Yeah. These are the very traditional early equipment that we used uh, to take care of the tree. The date palm tree needs a lot of taking care of. It's not like uh, on a golf course. We have date palm trees right by us. We all live on a golf course. And you can see dates on the ground. Nobody takes care of the tree. Trees. So those dates are not good enough. So the date palm trees, have, as I said, it grows to be 90 feet up. It lives 150 years. The root of the tree needs a lot of water, although dates themselves can't have water. I will show it to you the other side. These are the original equipment. They put the rope around the tree, and this is a seat that the gentleman is sitting in barefooted. They climb up these tall trees, and now they have hydraulic thing that they climb up. And the trees, well, I will show it to you how cumbersome it is, uh, labor intensive, to take care of a tree and grow uh, dates. Because dates uh, were brought in this country from Middle East, we dedicated this window to the Middle Eastern, the Torah, the Quran, and Bible. And it wasn't until 1898 when we went to Saudi Arabia. What year was that? 1898. Okay. And we brought the offshoots of the date uh, palm trees, transported it in these crates, and brought them to this country. And as I said, we plant them all over the place, and we found out this is the area that they grow. We can plant the date palm trees two ways. We can plant them with the seeds, and we can plant the offshoots. But most of the date growers do not plant the date palm trees with the seeds. Do you know why? Because it, it takes so long for them to Everybody germinate. Everybody says that. Everybody says that. Uh -huh. no, That's it not it. Be, but it's not. The reason is if we plant the tree with the seeds, you know that the dates, we have over 200 different kinds of dates. And if you plant it with the seeds, you don't know what kind of a date you get. But if the grower, let's say, wants only Medjool or Bahari uh, 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 dates, and they take the offshoots off the uh, Bahari tree or Nicolet Noor or whatever else, then they are 100% sure that they get that kind of a date. I see. Yeah, so that makes a makes lot of sense. Yes. And uh, uh, you will see the equipment. Here is more modern equipment. Uh, we, uh, instead of a, a rope, they have a chain. Instead of that seat, they have this. Yeah, it looks a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> uh, it does, it does. And as I said, the, the date palm trees, they don't pollinate themselves. So they get the powder from the male tree. They put it in that green bottle, or they um, saturate the uh, cotton ball with the powder, and then they pollinate the tree. You can see this gentleman pollinating the tree here. Yeah, I just watched a documentary on... Yes, the shield. Yes. Yeah, well, no, it was on TV, and it uh, explained how how it took to pollinate all of the females. <laughs> it was it's quite really a job. It's labor yeah. intensive. Yeah. The farming the dates is an all year round operation. Uh -huh. We pollinate the fruit bunches in March and April. We thin and tie down the bunches of um, uh, uh, dates, either with the material or with the paper. Okay. If you come, if you travel around here in August, you will see, uh, and go to, towards the salt and see, you will see all the date bunches are covered. Oh. We cover them because we, we, if we ever get a rain, which we don't, uh, rain, uh, the water will destroy the, the dates, and also dust and birds. So we protect them from dust and oh. bird and, and water. So we uh, tie them down the bunches in May and June, and then we cover them with the paper or the cloth. Um, and then harvest began in late August to December. 
and then clean up the date garden and pruning them and de-thorning them in December and January, and then planting offshoots. Oh, wow. Because the tree grows so tall, the date grower sometimes abandon the tall trees. It's too cumbersome. Okay. So although we used to use uh, uh, these ladder, and now they use the hydraulic thing to, to, to go through, to climb up the tall trees, but it still is a lot of work. Right. So they abandon the trees and constantly they are planting the offshoots. Okay. When you travel, you will see huge, um, I want to call it vase, but they're huge, and they are planting the offshoot, the young trees. This is interesting. That's a gas pump, isn't it? Oh. Yes, it's a gas pump. Actually, uh, one of our friends uh, who had who owned a gas pump um, years ago, and he has donated it to us. Wow. See what you had to do back then, hon? You put it in there. And you sat here and pumped it. Oh, yeah. And then it would slowly go around. Because most cars back then probably didn't take it. Well, who knows how much they took. But that, that was the work you had to do back then. Yeah. Wow. My and goodness. It was probably three cents a gallon back then. <laughs> probably they work safer and better. Well, yeah. 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 Probably not too many people probably drove away with the hose stuff. <laughs> <laughs> But this is the only date museum in the world. Okay. And this building wasn't built as a date museum. This building was a, used to be a library. And then the board decided, you know, we are the date country of the world. We, we grew there, we produced date, and then send them to all over the United States, as well as all over the world, with the exception of Middle East that they have their own. This tree is a cork tree. You know, cork tree uh, originates in Spain. Yep. And uh, there are not that many cork trees in a desert. They told me that there are, I guess, two of them. This is one, and one is in somebody's ranch. But this tree was here when Dr. Smiley bought the property. Okay. So it's an old, old tree. Actually, uh, this is the first time I see that the leaves are brownish. They're usually very, very green. Oh, so it is a lot different weather this year then. Yes, yes. Okay. We are hot for this time of the year. This area we call it Japanese area, and the Japanese uh, citizen, they are all much older. The one that they came with their parents, grandparents, work for the railroad. They take care of it. If you later on walk through it, they have some little uh, statues and things. Okay. For, you know. This is our rose garden. We volunteer brought our clippers to cut the dead roses because we couldn't afford a gardener. Okay. Now the city is uh, having a gardener. I don't know how often he comes, but they take care of it. Oh, that's nice. It's a good thing. Yeah. Now we are going to go inside and uh, tour of a house and then you can go anywhere you like. Okay, to. thank you. So, we start from the kitchen. Usually we start in the bedrooms, but here we start from the kitchen. As we say, here I wanted, before I forget, can you see the thickness of the wall? Yeah, those are really thick. These are because of the adobe. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yes. See, look at that, guys. Yeah. That's huge. Now, those days that the house was built in 1926, no houses had refrigerator or ice box, and they had them. They put the sign up and they said to the ice man how many pounds of ice they need to be put in here. Uh -huh. I always say by the time they deliver it, probably most of it was melted. <laughs> right. But this house has a basement and I believe, if I'm not making a mistake, it's about 11 square, 1100 square wow. foot. Yeah. And um, so when Mr. and Mrs. Smiley were spending uh, he, uh, time here, because Mrs. Smiley was a realtor, and they had a house in Redondo Beach as well. But when if they were here and it was hot, they spent a lot of time in a basement. So the maid cooked and sent the food down with the dumbwaiter. Oh, yeah, look at that. Mm -hmm. yep. 
Let's go downstairs. Yeah. And uh, one thing again, as a foreigner, I am always so proud of what America made that last long. The tiles, the sink, and the medicine cabinet are all original. They have never been uh, repaired. It is what they built at that time. Mm -hmm. wow. And uh, I say now we have this the Chinese material <laughs> for after two years. We don't know why he had the um, medicine cabinet in the kitchen. Maybe uh, if uh, because he was a doctor or it was a custom to do it. I don't know. But anyway, this is where they kept the, um, the flour and mm -hmm. how they churned the uh, butter and uh, ground the meat. This is the incinerator that they oh. took the garbage out and they burned it uh, outside at night. The most oh. impressive appliances in this kitchen is the stove. This stove is the combination of electric and gas. It was unheard of at that time. Beautifully made, you yeah. know, with the chimney and uh, the oh, yeah. thing. And again, I say, look how we make things heavy and yeah. uh, last yeah. forever. My. Uh, I have a one unit oven in the microwave, and microwave something went bad, and they said, oh, you have to change the whole thing, and mm -hmm. they are all made in China, and it's, ah. but I, I love the things that was made oh, yeah. forever. It's still here. Yes. Especially if you want to and of course, have gas and do all that. Exactly. And, <laughs> and this is a, uh, a toaster. toaster. Yeah. Yeah. And this is more modern toaster, electric toaster. You still yeah. have to turn the bread from one side to another. Oh. But what I like about this one, when the toast was ready, you could keep it up here. Oh, keep it oh okay. Oh, that was very clever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> wow. Here yeah, for their uh, silverware and, you know, some of these companies are still uh, around. Yeah. And, yeah, Hillsboro Coffee. Folders, <laughs> Quaker Oats. The dining room. Oh. And here we display like that is. Can you imagine? Oh my goodness, <laughs> ladies. I wouldn't dare we should all be so happy that we do not have to do that anymore. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> what are you doing? Sitting in the corner? Is that where you used to be in school? In the corner? Cause, cause why? Because I'm a spaz and I always got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs>